chapter 16. This will be the final chapter of the lab manual. It will be covering the eye and the ear. We'll start with the anatomy of the eye. Our first structure is called conjunctiva. This is a thin layer of epidermis that's going to cover any part of the eye that is exposed to the atmosphere. Now there are lots of microorganisms just floating around in the air. So this thin layer prevents these microorganisms from having direct access to our eye. You've also probably heard of a condition called conjunctivitis before this, this class. And this is a structure that is inflamed due to like a bacteria or a virus or immune response. There are three main layers of the eye. The fibrous tunic is the outermost layer. The vascular tunic is the middle layer. And then the neural tunic is going to be the innermost layer. So as we take a look here in pink, we can see the conjunctiva that's it's covering anything that's exposed to the outside world. And again, we're not going to actually distinguish between the two parts of it. We're just going to call the whole thing conjunctiva. Here are the layers. We see the fibrous tunic on the outside, the vascular tunic in the middle, and then the neural tunic on the inside. Now, the structures that make up the fibrous tunic, the first one is called the sclera, which is the whites of the eyes. This is made of dense regular connective tissue, which helps really support the shape of the eye and protect it. The cornea is gonna be the clear structure in the front of the eye that's going to bend light waves through the pupil. We'll also see the optic nerve as it's coming out the back of the eye. So taking a look here at the sclera in white, outermost layer. The cornea is this clear structure at the front of the eye. And then we can also see the optic nerve as it leaves the backside of the eye. Now the structure is making up the vascular tunic. The first structure is called the chorid coat or the chorid layer. This is just deep to the sclera. It has lots of blood vessels that take oxygen to the cells. Also this chorid coat is usually a darker color, a brown or black color. The ciliary body is a thickening of this cord layer around the front of the eye, and it forms a ring surrounding something called the lens. In the ciliary body, there is a circular muscle called the ciliary muscle that will contract and pull on the ligaments that hold the lens in place, and those ligaments are called suspensory ligaments. The iris is going to be just anterior to the lens, and that has a certain pigment in it that gives everybody the color of their eyes. The pupil is just going to be the opening of the eye. So as we take a look, we'll go with blue here. We can see the speckled layer, which is the chorid coat, chorid layer. So if you trace this speckled layer all the way to the anterior, you'll see it thickens out. And so we have a sagittal view so we, it looks like almost like a triangle from this view but in reality it is a circular structure but this entire thing is called the ciliary body and then the muscle that resides in it is called the ciliary muscle we also see these really tiny ligaments here that are holding the lens in place and these are the suspensory ligaments now just in front of the lens here this continuation of the chorid layer this is the iris and then the pupil is just the hole to the eye. The neural tunic is also called the retina, and this is where you find the actual light receptors, like the rods and the cones of the eye. The optic disc is going to be where all the nerve fibers of the retina leave to form the optic nerve. And so in this spot, there are no light receptors. And so it is the blind spot as there are no cells to actually to receive light and interpret it but instead it's just nerve fiber. So this is called the optic disc. The fovea centralis is a really small depression on the retina, the posterior wall, and it's just right where light goes directly through to the back wall. This is where the sharpest image is, and it's mainly made up of cones. The macula lutea is just gonna be tissue that immediately surrounds the fovea and it 